What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another Fish the Moment live stream. Today, Randy and I are going to be breaking down the recent Bassmaster Elite Series event on Lake Fork. Patrick Walters got the W with a huge margin of victory, had 104 pounds in November, which is crazy because he just obliterated the field. And he did it in a very specific way that is on kind of the bleeding edge of bass fishing in terms of techniques and technology. And it's something I've been experimenting with a lot with the guys here at the Bass Tank in Oklahoma. And I want to share what I know about this technique and how Patrick was able to basically lap the field and beat the entire feel by 25 to 40 pounds it was ridiculous but anyways randy how's it going tonight um thanks for joining me yeah doing good johnny i'm i'm really curious to hear your analyzation of this thing because man i am seeing more and more everybody knows that follows me knows how resistant i've been to technology electronic technology but i'm seeing something unfold with this live scope that is just you can't deny it you, it's it's something that i it's the impact that it's having on um, just fishing in general, not just tournament fishing, is just, I've never seen anything like it. And I think we're just beginning to scratch the surface on understanding what this is about. And um, it's, uh, I'm, I'm curious to see, you know, what you got to say about it. Because I know you've been using it, you know, the last several months. Yeah, I've been using it pretty much exclusively in my trips with you. And in some of our shallow versus offshore challenges we've been doing, it's been the reason that I've been catching my fish, especially as we get into the fall. In the summer, it's not as hard to catch fish offshore as it is in the fall and even in the winter. But as you get into that fall time of the year, the bass tend to suspend a lot more than they do in the summer. And I would say that probably 80% of the offshore bass are suspended versus maybe 30 to 40% of the bass in the summer, which means there's a lot less catchable bass. Usually in general theory, the catchable offshore bass are the ones that are positioned close to the bottom related to cover, where that's a ledge, a point, brush pile, whatever it is, and they're on the lip of a ledge or right on the edge of a drop-off. But the fish that are suspended out off the drop are usually very tricky to catch, and it's really hard to dial them in. But since I've got that live scope, I have found that I've been able to really target those suspended fish that are off the drops out in the middle of the creek channels and have great success. You guys have seen it in some of my live scope videos already where I caught one trip, caught four or five fish over four pounds on a swim bait suspended off a drop. I've been catching them on a Neko rig out in the middle of nowhere on points. And recently, Randy and I were on Grand Lake, and I was catching them in 35 feet of water on an Alabama rig over the middle of like 100 foot of water, which is a crazy technique for Grand Lake, not something you would normally expect to do. And it's all because of that live scope. I, that's one thing. I you, when when you talk about Grand Lake and you talk about catching fish suspended thirty over sixty, that's just in a different world. I mean, I fished that lake for for over forty years, and I have just not seen that. It's like it's almost like we're we're like exploring another planet, you know, with this yeah. live scope thing. And I is as, as resistant as I am to the thing. I just I'm getting sucked into wanting to get one. I'm really am, you know. Yeah, the and I'm like everybody else. I, I just have to, I just got to pay for it like everybody else. But I'm on the verge of it. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy because the live scope. The way I think about it, and I've talked about this, or I'm going to make videos about this, guys. Don't worry, I'm going to go in depth about this. But the live scope, in my opinion, is basically like the equivalent of having down imaging, but you can see out in front of the boat while you're fishing. And then you have the Mega 360 imaging, which I also have on the boat from Humminbird. And that's kind of like having side imaging while you're fishing. And it's just that next step where usually when I go fishing offshore, I can still catch some of these suspended fish. And I have done it in the past in the fall and in the winter by graphing these offshore areas with my regular fish finder. You know, my console mount mounted fish finder driving over it with down imaging and side imaging, seeing where the fish are positioned, dropping a waypoint, and then kind of fan casting that area, counting down my swim baits, counting down my Alabama rigs. And, you know, I've been doing that for 10 years now. It's not something that's new or groundbreaking. What's groundbreaking, though, is the fact that you can actually now pinpoint these fish as they move and as they're suspended, which increases the number of fish you can catch with these suspended fish by five to 10 times. It's crazy because like if I was just going to go out and try to catch these suspended fish over the Creek channel in 30 feet of water, there's no way I would be able to catch more than maybe two or three of those fish a day just because I would, 
be so inefficient. I would just basically have to lock my bait in front of one of those fish and count my bait down the perfect amount to get it right around the bait balls. But as I'll show you here, guys, in a second on my live scope, I can actually now watch an Alabama rig or a drop shot or a shaky head or whatever it is, fall on the live scope, go down to the level of where the bait fish are and the bass are, reel that bait through a bait ball or through those fish and watch them eat the bait. It's a next level of efficiency. And I know that Randy, you might be thinking, man, that's a little bit too much. That's like kind of taking the mystery and the, 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 you know, the intrigue out of fishing. And the way I think about it is it's, it is, but it's also increasing our ability to target fish. We've never been able to target before, which are those suspended bass. And that's what live scope really is a key for. It allows us to unlock a new type of fish that you've never been able to efficiently target before. Yeah, and, you know, and, that, and that's a different conversation. Obviously, in a perfect world, you know, I, I would prefer the old school, traditional style of fishing. But get, that being said, I know that you've got to adapt. You you have to adapt this technology if you're going to compete in tournament fishing on any level. And I got a question for you, Johnny. It's like I remember earlier this year when Jacob Wheeler won the uh, MLF event on Lake Eufaula. You know, he had the whole twenty thousand dollar setup mm -hmm. of every electronic out there including the live scope and in the, in the uh, show that you did on it uh you made a point you were explaining why the live scope wasn't necessarily the key piece of equipment for jacob to win that tournament do you still feel that way as far as that uh because to me you didn't you didn't seem like you were sold on it at that point like you are now i mean what has anything changed since then it, it has because what Jacob was doing is he was targeting a school of fish that was up on top of a ledge actively feeding. So let me kind of give you, actually going to share a, a graphic with you guys. For the podcast listeners, you might not be able to see what I'm talking about here, but if you watch it back on YouTube, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. And for all live viewers, you'll see. So basically, we have a graphic right here where I have a ledge. And this is just kind of like a generic ledge that you might see. And we have a bass up here on top of this drop around a brush pile. Now, it could be around a rock pile. It could be around whatever. And in general, when you're fishing offshore, the fish you would always catch are the bass that are setting up around these brush piles up in shallower water. And in the situation where Jacob won that tournament on Eufaula, he was catching all of his fish when a school of bait fish and the bass were positioned on top of a ledge. And he was basically just kind of using his imaging or his 360 imaging his live scope to kind of line up his cast but he found those fish actually with his side imaging and he actually posted a post about this on social media that he saw the school of fish on side imaging as he was driving with his boat at four or five miles an hour then made his cast up there to catch those fish that in that situation the live scope was not that useful it wasn't going to change the world it was really helping him kind of just dial in his cast the thing that Patrick Walters and what I'm doing now and a lot of the guys over here at the Bass Tank in Oklahoma are doing is they are not just focused on catching the bass up on top of these drops, up on top of these brush piles. What they can do now is they can catch fish that are suspended, let's say, over some deep trees. Or if we take the trees away, fish that are suspended just out in the middle of the water column. And these bass are a lot more migratory. They'll just swim around chasing big schools of bait fish. And they're almost impossible to catch without utilizing some sort of live scope technology because the way that you can get these fish to bite is you have to bring a bait right in front of their face as they're feeding on these bait fish. Now this is something that you may have done seen guys do in the past which is called video game fishing which is taking like a jigging spoon or a shat or a, um, a jig and wrap, wrap a jig and wrap, a drop shot, whatever, dropping it vertically on these fish as the schools of bait fish and fish swim underneath the boat. But really, at that point, you can only see directly below your trolling motor. With the live scope, though, you can literally scan 70 feet in front of you and see these fish way out in front of the boat, scanning side to side. And if I pull up a recording here really quick of my actual live scope from a recent fishing trip, I'll show you exactly what I'm doing with this, and I'll pull this up for you guys to see. Basically, what you can see here is that I am scanning over a drop off. Let me see if this is the best example here. Yeah, I'm scanning over a drop off and basically here is 
if we pause this image, and some of you guys, I'm, I'm gonna make a video about live scope and how all this works. But basically, here's a fish right here sitting in 30 foot of water in the center of my screen. It's a big blob, probably a three to four pound bass. I'd already caught a three pounder and a really good one off doing this exact same thing. This fish right here is basically positioned off the side of the drop up here, which usually these fish are not catchable. They're very tough to catch, these isolated roamers basically. And what you'll see is that in this clip as I play it forward, that bass is sitting right there. He's sitting there and I'm just kind of scanning that thing to the side and all of a sudden, boom, right here, here comes my Alabama rig. And I actually cast my Alabama rig up here and I'm working that thing and I saw that fish on my live scope, fired that bait down there and I'm bringing my Alabama rig right by that fish, right there. That's my Alabama rig. The fish is looking at it, it's turned on it. And right there, look, there's a big ball of bait fish. So right in front of me, I have an Alabama rig, bait fish and bass. This is the key situation you're looking for when you're trying to use this live scope. It's a fish that's feeding on a ball of bait fish that's kind of swimming around. And I'm bringing that Alabama rig right by the bait fish, right by the bass. Now to get that cast, to get that bait down there, it's very difficult. And getting the right bait is very difficult. It actually took me about four and a half hours of offshore fishing to even get my first bite. And Randy can attest to this. I had no fish until like noon on our offshore versus shallow fishing day because I was trying to catch them on flutter spoons, hair jigs, regular swim baits. And I found that the deal on this day was throwing the Alabama rig at them and I could get these fish to bite. And that fish literally was just chasing this bait ball and I'm working my Alabama rig through that bait ball around those fish. And that's how I was getting these fish to bite. And you actually watch my Alabama rig right here. I'm kind of losing it a little bit, but that bass is following my Alabama rig and he finally eats it and it's like a three pounder. So um, I'll save you guys the trouble of that. But at the same time, you can also use this live scope to find fish that are up in shallower water. Now, these are the fish that usually are catchable and I actually caught one of these fish as well. These fish are up in 15 foot of water and you can see these two bright dots. They're up on top of the drop. These are the fish that are up here on top of this ledge. And I actually saw these fish on my 2D sonar and my down imaging. I didn't need live scope to locate these fish. These fish were setting up on a brush pile. I actually caught one just by casting over to them. And live scope was not helpful for those fish. I didn't need it to pinpoint those fish, cast on them. I've been doing that type of fishing for years. Those are catchable fish that anyone can catch without live scope, as long as you know how to dial in your electronics, know how to use your waypoints, stuff like that. But the fish that are out here over 35 foot of water chasing spate fish suspended, those are the fish that are super tricky to catch. And those are the fish that I can target now with my live scope and basically put an Alabama rig or whatever right on top of them and catch those suspended bass. Now, what Patrick Walters was doing was even a little bit more unique in that what he had was he was fishing on Lake Fork and he was finding isolated big fish that were suspended around trees that had bait fish flowing around them. And so the area that Patrick Walters was in was kind of in, I don't know the exact areas, I I just saw one of the areas was right around here. And basically there's a bunch of standing timber out in this general area, just in this bay and in this pocket. And he was just basically targeting the standing timber that was out here in eight to 15 foot of water, throwing a jerk bait. And he found that was a good bait to get him to trigger. Also got some fish on a swim bait and a few other things. And what he was doing was basically finding fish on the live scope that were hanging out in this timber in the center of these pockets and guts. Now, on a lot of lakes across the country, Randy, there's a ton of fish that sit in the middle of pockets and guts in standing timber. Now, I've caught fish like this in the winter with a jig, with an Alabama rig, stuff like that in the past, but it was just kind of randomly fishing for them. But now, Patrick Walters, he's taking his jerkbait and he is targeting individual fish that he's seeing positioned in a tree. Basically, what it looks like, I don't have a good recording of this, I'm hoping to go out actually Uh, soon one of the guys from the bass tank he has some fish found on this exact Patrick Walters pattern here in Oklahoma and he caught a 30 pound bag doing it like yesterday so check out the bass tank Instagram if you want to see that but what you can see or find these fish these dots that are hanging out in those trees throw your jerk bait around them jerk that jerk bait down to the level of those fish and you can watch them just inhale it but the deal is is that these bass they're not just random or not sitting on the exact spot out here what they're doing is they're roaming they're just kind of swimming through these trees chasing bait fish it's not like there's a one spot where you can go in here and pinpoint boom that's your spot that you need to be fishing 
these fish could literally be in any area out here. They're just roamers. And that's what you can do with the live scoop. You can target these roaming fish that are just kind of cruising out here in the middle. And those are fish that are literally ghost fish in the past. And that if you caught one, you were completely lucky. So that is... Um, that's kind of what uh, that's what they're doing, Randy. I, sorry, I went off kind of a tangent, but what are your thoughts on all that? Well, okay, my question is: Let's take Patrick Walters in this thing. As far as like when he found these fish, did he did he find these fish by basically you know fishing through the standing timber and getting a bite here or there, or did he actually approach this area and do nothing but live scope the area before he even started fishing? And, you know, that's a big question I have about these guys that are targeting individual fish. I mean, are they going in just, you know, just like you do, you know, with your electronics, you don't even fish. You just idle around until you basically see the fish and see how they're set up, see if they're catchable. Is that what these guys are doing with the live scope? Are they not even fishing until they see these fish? Yeah, you don't need to, you wouldn't be fishing until you see these fish. And that's how really, if, if I was going out practicing for a tournament, like on a flake fork, what you probably can do is you can initially use your regular 2D sonar to graph through these areas, and you can see some of these fish on 2D, just on 2D, on um, on down scan, things like that. And you can just kind of graph through, and what you'll find is that there's probably going to be bait fish positioned in these general areas, where you'll find more bait fish than not. And that's how I found my fish on Grand. What I was doing on Grand, let me share my screen over here, switch this over, is basically... I was over on Grand Lake um, over here in Oklahoma, and the whole deal was I needed to find the points that had bait fish on them. So, for example, this point right here had a pile of bait fish on it, and I knew that if there was a bunch of bait fish here, there had to be some bass positioned here. I didn't see that many bass, though, actually on my down imaging and on my 2D sonar, but I knew that there was a bunch of bait fish here. There's a potential the bass were in that area and as a result I just kind of started scanning around with my live scope and I actually located some of those fish and the reason I wasn't seeing them on my down scan is those fish were so scattered that they weren't really like popping out where you know if I came back here like earlier in the year I was fishing grand and like you could go to all these points like down these banks and stuff and you could find them grouped up like you find 15 or 20 dots on the screen your classic image that I show in all my videos of like the groups of fish you can find them on these points but as the fall progresses these fish spread out more and what you need to do is basically just find the points that have a lot of bait fish around them or the areas and here on fork this areas happen to have probably the bigger gizzard shad in there and he probably saw some fish maybe busting on the surface some birds diving I don't know exactly what he was doing but then once you got in here he was probably just scanning around trying to locate some of these fish with the live scope and casting on them and that's how the guys at the live at the bass tank do it too when they're catching them if i was talking to them this week they're like we don't make a cast until we see a big blob on the the live scope that is it just doesn't happen that way we are basically just rolling around graphing until we find the bait see some fish and then we're getting the trolling motor in the water scanning around and then once you see them, you fire on them and you have to figure out the right bait then, the right retrieve for the conditions. It's not an easy technique. And that's why, you know, the guys, me and the guys at the Bass Tank estimate that maybe only five to ten guys on tour, the, of any tour, might be able to effectively use this technique on lakes across the country. It's not something that a lot of guys are going to be dialed into. But Patrick Walters has been killing it this year. And I think part of that has been his ability to use the live scope. And I think that at some point, like I titled the name of this live stream, this is going to change fishing forever. Literally the ability to just go into the middle of like random cuts and pockets and stuff in here and scan around and find these fish on live scope and hit them and catch them is going to change bass fishing. And if you can target that, that depth zone effectively, I would say that 75% of bass fishing tournaments could be won just catching suspended fish off the bank. You wouldn't really necessarily even need to go down and fish straight down the bank most of the year, except for when they're like spawning or when the shallow water bite is like on. But there's suspended fish out in the middle of these pockets and coves and off the off the bank year round. And there's no way you, you wouldn't be able to go catch them whenever you're doing this. So that's at least my opinion. 
Yeah, there's, you know, I think one of the things that we're finding out with this is like, you know, you, when you think about LiveScope, my, my initial um, perception of it was it's for like fish that are suspended out off points that, you know, you could just see they're roaming out there. But once the application of this particular technology can be applied to that water depth around shallow cover, that five to 10 foot zone, it's just like you said, it opens up a deal where you can catch these fish all year round on them. And that's what I'm saying about the potential of this thing. Yep. You know, to, to be a dominating force 12 months out of the year, you know, I can see it taking place. I mean, it's just, but it's just like you said, I don't think a lot of people understand the technology, what, what the potential that it has, even the guys that are sponsored by Garmin. Oh yeah. Because you know, I, I see a lot of these guys that are sponsored by Garmin that they don't do any better now than they have before they had that technology. So, you know, it's, it's, it's about being able to get the most out of it. And it's just like, you know, when you, when you had your 10 year old sonar, I mean, you absolutely maximized the potential of those units. And it's like you said, a handful of people have gotten that done with live scopes so far. Yeah. And that's the thing that's crazy to me is the, the fact that no one's really been um, taking advantage of this. And the reason I think that, that's the case is that the majority of anglers don't have a strong foundation in offshore bass fishing theory. And that's what I teach a lot in my videos. And I do like my advanced offshore bass fishing seminar. We actually have one coming up this week. There's two spots left. If you guys want to sign up, I would go sign up literally right now. Cause that always fills up and it's a great course on understanding not only just like how to read your electronics, but how to understand how to find fish with your electronics and the theory of offshore fishing. And that's what, really is the key to this because you can't like if i pull back up my screen lake fork is massive there's timber everywhere i mean it's not that big of a lake but it's it's vast there's fishing fishable water all over the place and you can't just go into a random pocket drop the troll motor and just start live scoping around if you did that your chance of finding fish are very limited it's not very good but if you have an understanding of how to find fish offshore with your console electronics your dash mounted fish finder with your regular side imaging down imaging which is something i'm very good at i can then find those fish very effectively find them quickly which is my number one strength and you've seen that randy in videos and stuff like that my number one strength is finding fish offshore quickly now though the live scope it gives me the ability to now catch those fish regardless of the mood they're in if those fish are up here positioned up on top of the shallow points you know if i pull up my screen here if these fish are positioned up here on a rock pile in 15 foot of water, I don't need live scope. I can catch them with my regular techniques, football jig, going up there, throwing it up there, catching those fish. Live scope's not gonna really, it might help me dial in my cast a little bit, but it's not that big of a deal. But let's say that, that the next day I come out here and I located these fish are off or up on top of this point and they're loaded on this rock pile, but the next day you come back, these fish might be suspended out off this point because you have a cold front or something. Maybe now they're out in some deep standing timber. Well, before you basically just had to say, well, those fish are uncatchable or it's really going to be tough to catch them. Or now I can still locate those same fish, roll up to these areas with the live scope, and I might be able to throw a little jigging spoon or a swim bait or something, fish through these areas with the swim bait and catch those exact same fish that were feeding the day before on this rock pile out here over 50, 60 foot of water suspended on bait fish. And that for me makes me... 10 times more effective when I go on the lake because once I find fish, I almost can always catch them now that I have the live scope, regardless of where they're positioned. Where before, I was limited to only being able to effectively catch the fish. They're up on top of the drop. Does that all make sense? It, I mean, it makes sense, you know, perfectly. I mean, it's just like, what it reminds me of, it's like, you know, I, I used to be a, a, a tournament martial artist, you know, fit, uh, you know, competed in martial arts tournament with traditional Japanese karate. And now, you know, with the advent of like the, like the, the modern jujitsu, the traditional Japanese karate martial artists simply cannot compete with the jujitsu experts. And it's sort of the same that what we're seeing with the, with the technology, with the live scope. I mean, there, there's no difference in that. And I just, I sit here, I'm, as I listen to you and, you know, describe this, this thing, I realize that I simply, not just myself, but anybody listening to this podcast that fishes tournaments competitively, 
you simply cannot compete without the thing most of the time. And I, you know, it's not just like a, a isolated to like suspended bass, like you said. Yeah. If you're going to compete and you're going to win money, you have got to master this thing. You've got to learn it. I've 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 come to accept it. I I resisted it and fought it for so long, but I have seen it hammered into my mind from the people that I take out on guide trips that use it, from yourself, from the professionals. And it's just, I'm just shaking my head here at how it's revolutionizing the fishing. It's basically taking everything that that anglers like myself that have been doing this forever know in the sport, and we have to put all of that aside and completely change our approach to bass fishing. Now, there are some techniques, sure, your sh- shallow water applications, your flipping and pitching, that type of stuff is always going to r- remain the same. But your window of success with that is very limited. And unless myself, unless everybody else adopts this technology, as long as it's legal and allowed to be used in the tournaments, you're just donating to everybody else that has it if you don't have it. I I've, 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 I've fully accept that reality right now. For sure. It's, it's definitely one of those deals where you have to have it you have to have it to be successful but you also have to master it and put time on the water it takes probably thousands of hours of understanding offshore fishing and stuff to be able to then use it because if you're a shallow water bank beater getting a live scope on your boat is not going to necessarily help you catch more fish because even like when i was on grand lake it took me five hours to find a way to get those fish to bite and i rotate a bunch of different techniques and areas and stuff like that to get those fish to bite once I figured it out, I could catch him. And again, if it was a tournament situation, I could practice for four or five days, find some areas or three days or whatever, dial it in. We were fishing for five hours and I hadn't been in the lake in two months. So that wasn't a great way to, you know, do the offshore deal. But one question I did get is um, uh, from Gary. He says, Johnny, if you're so good uh, and you got figured out, why don't you not fish the opens and take the money? Um, guys, taking the money in opens is not as, uh, as cracked up as it seems to be, uh, to break even in the opens is very difficult in itself. And personally, I much prefer teaching and doing fishing videos, stuff like that, doing fish the moment. It's a lot more secure income. I can do it from my house. I don't have to travel all over. Randy can talk about that as well. Professional fishing is not all that's cracked up to be. Honestly, I get to fish three or four days a week if I wanted to stay in my house and see my wife every day, not have to travel all over the place and make a really comfortable living, probably making a better living than 90% of the bass fishing tournament professionals. So that's why I don't do it. Yeah, there's a fame and glory that goes along with it, but honestly, I don't really care about hoisting up trophies and stuff like that. I don't need that for my ego. Um, And I prefer to just share this information with you guys and teach it as opposed to doing anything else. That's, that's the main reason behind it. And Randy, I'm sure you can I'll, add that. I'll address that, that question a little bit to sort of, uh, you know, give everybody a little insight. I I've been doing this professionally for over 30 years. I qualified for 18 Bassmasters classics, Fordswood cups. I've won several Bassmaster tournaments. I've won close to $2 million in the sport. I have beat Johnny one time in our challenger since we started fishing. We have done a dozen challenges. He has beat me every time except one time. So for those of you that, out there that think that he could not compete on the level, I'm here to tell you that you're wrong. It's just a matter of choice on that. So um, I've, I'm, you know, that's that's what I'll say about that. Yeah. So that's all I'll say on that. It's not uh, a lot of guys think you know professional fishing is the the end all be all. And there's a lot of great fishermen you don't fish professionally. And that's just the way it is. It's, it's expensive. It's a lot of time. It's, yeah, it's a lifestyle you have to just get into. And that's not really my lifestyle. So, um, but no, a couple questions here, Randy, people are talking about are, and guys, by the way, I am going to be making videos on all of the stuff. I've been holding off making live scope videos and 360 imaging videos till I fully understand the technology. I've had it for like three months. So I have not had the time behind it to understand the settings and everything perfectly. So I'm going to wait to have it on the boat for six months before I start making really detailed videos, comparison videos, just because I want to give you guys the best information I can. I don't want to come at you with some half-baked 
video that doesn't tell the full story because that's not going to be helpful for anyone. That's how I do all my videos. Like if I don't feel like I'm going to teach you something that I know really well or Randy knows really well, we're not just going to come out there and just BS you guys. That's not our style. So that's why we haven't made or I haven't made a dedicated like how to use a live scope video because I want to be dialed in with it before I make anything. Um, but uh, we have a couple questions here, Randy, about kind of that whole idea of should live scope be outlawed not or not. And I want to get in that topic, but before we do, I do want to jump over and share with you guys a couple things we have going on on fishthemoment.com. We got a lot of cool stuff going on, and I want to let you in on it because it's some big projects that we've been working on. I've been working on something for two and a half weeks straight, basically, and that's revamping our Fish the Moment Lake Breakdowns. Randy's been getting tuned up on this process, and basically what we're doing is we are transitioning from offering lake maps where we just circle little circles on a, a contour line map to giving you actual GPS coordinates that you can pull up on Google Earth and download straight into your fish finder of all brands. So you can do it for Garmin, Lowrance, and Hummingbird. We have all the files there. We have a very detailed guide explaining how to get the waypoints onto your fish finder. And we're marking very specific spots like rock transitions or specific spots on points and different laydowns, stuff like that. So we can give you more precise recommendations than we were just putting circles on the map. And I really wanted to make sure we made this change going forward because for me, it's really important to give you guys the most accurate breakdowns we can and because of that we have pulled down all the old breakdowns and we have a lot of new breakdowns these are all things that we have revamped in the last week they take like four five hours sometimes to make these it's a lot of effort so you can see you know personally I've made like 25 of these things you can imagine how much time that took me plus trying to get videos out doing everything else so if you haven't seen the video production as high as it usually is is because of this and so we have all the fall maps here and Randy's going to be working on the winter maps for all these lakes and then some with the GPS coordinates on all these lakes. And so there are 40 GPS waypoints across four different sections of the lake with detailed description which will give you an area description, a summary of the lake, exactly what baits to throw, lure recommendations, all kinds of stuff. So if you do want to get a better understanding of your lake, find some spots in your lake. I highly recommend checking out these new lake breakdowns. They're much improved from the old ones. And I just think that they will definitely help take your fishing game to a next level if you're struggling on these lakes. Anything else to add there, Andy? Yeah, they've been really uh, well received from everything. It's just like you said, the attention to detail on our GPS uh, format is a lot better than our other one. The other one was really good too, but this puts you right specifically on the places you need to be. Um, it, you know, the other way that we did it, it sort of got you close to the area, but uh, just like you said, we really, you know, got you enclosed where you can take the spots that we have and there, and you can allow, it allows you to duplicate them much easier than you could before. So I think everybody will really be happy with them that gets them. Oh yeah, for sure. And then um, another thing we have going on, there's some new virtual seminars. We have uh, two new seminars coming up. We just did an advanced jerkbait seminar with Randy, which went really well. And now we're going to be doing an advanced offshore seminar. I'll be talking about winter fishing offshore, how to catch fish, a lot of suspended fish, both with the live scope and without the live scope with regular sonar, how to catch fish offshore in the winter, usually if I find fish offshore in the winter, I'm having 60 to 100 fish days. You can crush them in the winter offshore. And if you guys want to go out and just have a blast in the winter, if your lake is clear of ice, obviously, definitely check out the seminar. And then for all you tournament guys out there who really want to do well in tournaments in the winter, if you fish a winter series or whatever, Randy and I are going to be doing a winter crankbait seminar. And we're both going to be on the seminar because I want to, I was going to have Randy just do it, but I actually love fishing crankbaits in the winter too. So we're both going to be on this and we're going to be talking about how to catch fish on crankbaits when the water temperature is below 60 degrees all the way to when the water temperatures are in the high 30s on crankbaits, all different ways to fish them. And for tournament guys, this is a must attend seminar because crankbait fishing in the winter especially on certain lakes, is the way to catch giant bags of fish. And if you want to fish winter series trails, stuff like that, crankbait fishing is pretty much my favorite way to catch big fish in the winter. So definitely check out this seminar as well. And I do have an advanced electronics seminar, which will cover a lot of the uh, theory behind electronics and offshore fishing. 
and give you a really good idea of how to maximize your down imaging, side imaging, and 2D sonar to locate active groups of fish and interpret what you're seeing on your sonar. We only have two spots left in the seminar, so I would sign up if you can. It's this Thursday um, at 12 or at uh, 6 p.m. So anyways, that is all that, Randy. I don't want to take up everyone's time talking about this, but let's get back over to some, just kind of answer some of the comments we got here. And, um, and oh, by the way, Brent's asking, it would be great if we could filter the lake breakdowns by state. That is coming. We're actually, I'm going to be redoing the entire website here too. I'm kind of doing a lot of stuff right now, guys, with the website and with everything. I'm trying to get us ramped up for 2021. And so again, video production, everything's been kind of down a little bit, mainly just because I've been trying to get us like dialed for 2021 and all the stuff that we can be going trying to make sure we get as much great content. I just ordered a camera drone um, to, so we can do some like overlay shots where actually we can see, you can get like a perspective view of the areas I'm fishing, Randy's fishing. We're gonna do graphics in there. You guys have no idea what's coming. We got some awesome stuff coming. But um, one thing that uh, was a call out, some guys are kind of saying, you know, the live scope is a, um, um, it's just ex- a big expense. And that's one thing that you've talked about in the past, Randy, is that, Getting a live scope, it's two thousand seven hundred dollars, and that's for like the low end or two thousand five hundred maybe um, to get everything installed, get everything properly done, and that kind of prices some guys out of the ability to use live scope. And one thing that uh, it was Ira said, you know, you could get the live scope, but a bunch of guys had live scope on their boat and they didn't catch a hundred pounds on fork. Patrick Walters did. And the main reason for that is because Patrick Walters understands how to use live scope better than the rest of the field, especially in that situation. And he also knew how to find those fish with his electronics otherwise. That's how he was able to really capitalize on that bite. Now, you know, he may have just lucked into it. We don't know what he did, but there is a way to dial that bite in if you are looking for it intentionally. And I just don't think a lot of guys are intentionally looking. And so... Once everyone starts figuring this out, live scope is going to become a must. And that's to the point where I think it might be some regulation coming in on the live scope. If everyone starts using it and everyone starts getting really good with it, there may be some calls for regulation on it from a lot of the older guys, I think. Because I don't think the older guys are maybe going to want to adjust to it as much. But these younger guys, if they all figure it out, they could be absolutely dominant over the you know guys in their 30s and 40s if if they get that dialed in, what are your thoughts there, Randy? Well, it's, it's just like you said, I mean, if it's, if it's legal to use, it's going to be a dominating force moving forward indefinitely, because when you're talking about being able to target specific fish or even small wolf packs of fish, those fish, I don't care how much fishing pressure they get, they're still going to be there. And if the, if the live scope is the only way to catch those fish, it's, it's just like you always say, Johnny, it's going to add up to two to five more fish a day for you on average, which if you do that, it puts you over the top with tournament fishing. In my my personal opinion, like I said, I've, I and I still feel this way, I just think that we need to have some type of a cap on technology. I mean, we that's a different conversation to have. Um, it's more of a philosophical viewpoint that I have on fishing because I'm, sort of I'm sort of a purist when it comes to bass fishing and the environment in general, but I'm also a realist and I, and I can see right now that, um, as long as this thing is legal, I mean, if you don't get it, you simply can't compete in tournament fishing. Now that's not to say that you have to have it. If you're not, if you're not a tournament fisherman or you're just a casual club fisherman or something like that, because you can still compete shallow without a live scope. Most of those challenges that Johnny and I fished that he, you know, kicked my butt in, if I would have completely maximized the bites I would have had, I probably would have beat him in a lot of them. But he gets so many more opportunities because he's fishing. I'm fishing for lone rogue bass that I can't afford to lose any. He's fishing for groups of fish and numbers that give him that cushion where he can do that if he has. Plus the techniques that he uses are a lot more conducive to landing those bass and the ones that I use. So live scope, like I said, it's the real deal. It's here to stay. It's, just, it's, 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 it's going to be as big of a factor in fishing as like a Cinco is for the <laughs> lure categories. It's going to, it's, it's going to continue to dominate. And the big question is, like you said, is, is at what point do we have to say, 
enough is enough. We can't go any further. We're taking, we're taking away more than we're giving back to the sport. Every other sport does it. There's not a single sport out there, baseball, football, golf, professional bowling, whatever. They all have equipment limitations because they want to level the field. And at some point that's going to have to be addressed because the live scope technology is only going to get even higher tech as it moves on down the road. It's not going to stay where it is right now. So it's, it's a real philosophical question when it comes to fishing. Yeah, and some guys say, say or some of the guys in here are saying like, you know, anyone can be a pro with this technology and, you know, guys with money are ruining our clubs, our local clubs. One thing I'll say, guys, is that just because you have live scope and you have a Helix 15 or a Solix 15, you have all like 10 graphs in your boat. If you don't know when to go fish an offshore spot, what baits to throw, what stuff to look for on your electronics, all that stuff, it's completely pointless. The reason that I'm able to pick up this technology so quickly is I've been un- studying and understanding bass fishing technology since I was literally 10 years old, nine years old, from the flashers all the way through. And I've been a student of the game spending countless, you know, tens of thousands of hours, you know, hundreds of thousands of hours, maybe. I mean, I probably spent from the time I was 10 years old to the time I was 20, I probably spent 30 hours a week reading, watching, and fishing and doing whatever on bass fishing and especially focus on electronics. And that's allowed me to get really dialed in with this. And a lot of the pros do that too, because they have that on the water time. There's still nothing that beats on the water experience, being able to go figure out what tech, what the technology can do, finding the fish, trying to go catch them and doing it not only on a grand lake, but can you then go to a lake fork or a Sam Rayburn Lake down here? Then can you take it up here to Lake St. Clair or Lake Erie up north? And then can you take that over here to Lake Norman or some of these lakes like, you know, Bugs Island or Lake Gasson over here in North Carolina? The ability to translate that across different lakes and situations is also very, very complicated, and that takes even more time on the water. And that's something that, you know, I've been fortunate buying. Randy has. We've been able to travel and fish a lot of places all over the country, and we can translate patterns from one lake to another, even if we've never been to the lake before, because we fished countless times on probably over 100 different lakes and in boats and time on the water. So time on the water is the number one deal that allows me and allows Randy to consistently catch fish. And even if you have the technology, if you don't have the time on the water and you don't understand how the fish are positioning and what's going on, you're not going to catch them anyways. So this is not a technology gap where, you know, the guys who are really not that great are going to become really good all of a sudden. That's not the case. What I feel like the issue is, is that the guys who are already really good are going to get way better. It's the rich get richer situation as opposed to the average guy can go from being average to being really good. If if you take away the live scope from all these guys who are catching Packers or Walters, guys like that, they're still going to go catch them. It's just with this technology now, they're going to be able to blow out the field versus just being in the pack. What are your thoughts on that, Randy? Yeah, exactly, because there's such a fine line anyway between what people can see success and failure for example in a tournament okay say somebody catches 12 pounds a day and finishes 20th place in a tournament and then somebody else catches 10 and three quarters pounds a day and finishes 100th place in that tournament that person is considered a failure that catches the limit that weighs 10 and a quarter and the guy that catches 12 is considered you know has a great tournament where in your reality you're only talking about three or four ounces per fish difference in your limit so you know the separation between success and failure in the sport is so fine and that and in the past it's all it, it's always been with like details you can control like how sharp your hooks are having the right rod action having the right bait color those were the variables that gave you the advantage to actually get that three or four ounce per fish advantage over somebody else but now with like the live scope in this situation, that that's just a whole other element to consider with that. And I, you know, one of the questions out there that you know, one of the the, the uh, listeners mentioned about the the cost of this thing, you know, I totally get that, and that's that can be extremely frustrating 
when you know you want to perform at your top level and the best but you can't do that because you got a mortgage you got family at home you got kids to support you got bills to pay that and you know that's to me that's the most difficult part about it because i i get that i know where that's coming from so uh that's that that's just one of the big topics on this conversation yeah and it's there's no way getting around that and the guys who want to spend the money and put the time in they're going to do it and that's kind of my perspective is I really enjoy catching fish offshore and doing the live scope and using it. It's not for everyone. And that's why when we do our videos, we do the shallow versus offshore. Randy's style is different from mine and he's not leveraging the live scope. I am. And I'm not leveraging the live scope in every single situation, but I do use it when it's applicable because I have it and I enjoy it. But that's how that's what I enjoy about fishing. And for me, it's something that I really have a passion about is the offshore fishing and the electronics help a lot. One thing that I do want to um, call out one more time, I know we've talked about this a couple different times, but um, someone said, you know, it was Andy here. Andy says, I watch guys waste so much time trying to catch a fish they see on live scope. Sometimes the fish just don't bite. And that is something that is so true. And just to give you guys a perspective on the recent trip to Grand Lake that went on with Randy, we launched over here at this Disney boat ramp down here. And... I covered so much water to try to find fish that I felt like were catchable on that live scope by first graphing with my 2D sonar side imaging down imaging. And I actually kind of made a mistake because I went and I went across the lake here and I graphed pretty much every pocket and cove all the way from here, all the way into the very back of Duck Creek back in here, ran all the way back out, went all the way into the back of Drowning Creek till you get to the very back in here, then worked my way all the way back this way, and I never found any fish that I felt like were catchable. And I stopped and fished for a little bit, tried it for a few minutes, but just wasn't getting bit. And I'm pretty good at knowing when fish are catchable and when they're not, and that's what I teach in that advanced electronics classes. I can see on my live scope, or on my uh, down imaging and side imaging, if fish are catchable especially with the live scope. It's learning that is one of the keys to being really efficient offshore. And even if you have the live scope, if you can't identify if the fish are catchable in your area, you're not going to be able to catch anything hardly at all. And so what I found is that it graphed around for four hours. I fished for like 20 minutes, Randy, that day we were out there. I fished for 20 minutes and I graphed for, for three hours and 40 minutes, which most people are not going to do. And I finally got here and I got way back down to the dam. And this is the only place I had not graphed basically in this area. And I finally got down to this point over here and I saw the fish finally positioned in a way that were catchable. And I saw them in literally my first cast with an Alabama rig down there. Once I saw those fish were catchable... I'd already kind of eliminated the jigging spoon because I had tried it a few times throughout the day. I caught three pounder on my first cast. I then rolled over to another point in a similar zone, caught another fish on like my third cast once I found in position, ran over to another point, got bit over here, caught another fish. So I was able to then roll my day together because I found the right zone and I found those catchable fish. But most anglers they're just going to start randomly fishing points with the live scope and your chances of catching fish it decrease significantly because you're just relying on blind luck as opposed to a process of elimination using your electronics, using your fishing instincts, using your knowledge of offshore behavior. That's why I was able to get those fish in the boat. So there's so much more that goes into it than just the technology. At the end they were hunting a living, breathing creature. Well, at least through their gills and you can't just say oh pull up on a point point live scope at it and fish just flop in the boat that's not at all the case but there's a lot a lot of other stuff that goes into it but it definitely is a tool that's very very helpful so that's the last i'll yeah, say on that i haven't talked about that a lot but uh what are your thoughts I, that's that is such a good point when you're talking about time on the water because i it doesn't matter what technology that you have you know the decision-making process that you have comes from dirt time. It comes from countless hours on the water. It comes from seeing how things unfold under different uh, set of environmental circumstances because they can't teach you when you're talking about things like a shift in the wind and, 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 a, and a difference in light penetration in the water and the cloud intensity, all those environmental factors that come together, that's something that you can't really be taught it's something that you you develop a feel for, um, and it's it's sort of a primal sense that you develop as an angler. Um, this 
that, that is just sort of intuitive. It allows you to make those intuitive decisions. It allows you to trust your instincts, uh, trust your gut. And that comes from time on the water that just cannot be, uh, you know, gained any other way. I mean, all this other stuff we're talking about, the YouTube videos, the, the tech sonar technology, the bait technology, the tutorials, man, that can, that can cut the learning curves down so far, but eventually you got to get out there and see it for yourself. For sure. And some of the guys are asking, what's changing fishing forever I just got here? We're talking about live scope and how you can target the suspended fish that are out in the middle of nowhere that for years have been pretty much uncatchable. And now Patrick Walters has shown that you can catch those fish. And I've been doing it here in Oklahoma. Guys at the Bass Tank, they've been doing it. And if you guys do want to get um, a live scope on your boat and you hear us talking about this and you're like, man, I need to get a, a live scope, I would highly recommend heading over to Tulsa, Oklahoma and working with the Bass Tank on getting something installed in your boat, uh, live scope installed in your boat. These guys are at the cutting edge of live scope technology. They know exactly what they're doing with it. Um, they actually work with, they were at my boat and I don't work with companies um, very easily. Usually I'd like to just keep my companies the ones I really, really trust and believe in. And the guys that run this, I mean, the guy who owns the Bass Tank has won the the BFE, the Oklahoma BFL Angler of the Year last year, and he's also qualified for the Bass Nation State team like every single year, like for, like for the last like four or five years. So he is a stick, and he knows how to use live scope just as good as anyone out there. He knows it just as well as I do. Um, he knows his technology really well. They also know how to use the right batteries, the right cables to get the, the right power, all that stuff. I don't really know all that stuff about all that. I just let them handle it, and they put the batteries in that I need, and I say, hook me up, and these are the guys you need to go to, the Bass Tank. They are by far the leaders in live scope installation, and they have a bunch of different extra mounts and different things that you can use to dial in your live scope as well. And some guys were asking you, what about how do you use live scope when you have a three or when you have a spot lock? And when I'm, when I'm using spot lock, the live scope doesn't work that great because actually I have my live scope transducer mounted to the shaft of my trolling motor. So I can't, you move my trolling motor side to side and scan with the live scope. So when I have spot lock on, it's pretty much pointless. But the way I think about it is that with live scope, what I'm doing is I'm searching for roaming fish that are off in the middle of a lake suspended. And I don't need to be spot locked when I'm trying to chase these roaming fish that are moving around these spots. The only time I need to spot lock is when I have a spot completely dialed in and I know that they're sitting on a very specific area. In that case, live scope isn't that necessary at all anyways because I'm going to graph those fish first with my 2D sonar, side imaging, down imaging. I'm going to mark a waypoint, I'm going to pull up and I'm just going to use my waypoint method to line up, cast down those fish and get my bait down to them. I'll spot lock and I'll be able to make that cast over and over again and I don't need the live scope. Now, I do have Mega360 imaging on my boat as well, which is really nice. And I can use the Mega360 when the boat's spot locked to see the brush pile or the rock pile the fish are positioned on. But you don't necessarily need that necessarily. Um, you can do it with the old waypoint method. It just makes things a little bit nicer. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about with the waypoint method, just type in fish the moment, how to hit offshore structure. There's a video on it I made. It's like the best video on my channel. It explains exactly how to hit offshore structure spots first cast every time. And basically what I'm seeing, just I'm going to make a video about this, but what I find is that that live scope, that's the game changer in the fact that you can target those suspended fish that have been so elusive and so hard to catch. And you really have to just kind of get lucky to catch those fish or kind of just randomly fan cast and get around them. And those fish are so tricky to catch versus like a 360 or whatever, it can help you dial in your casting and help you see where the brush piles are. But you can also just do that with waypoints and graphing the area before you fish it. And there's a way you can get around that. But with the live scope, it literally opens up a new world of bass fishing that we have not explored before. And it's super cool. I'm super excited about it. I know not everyone's going to have live scope. I'm not going to make every video about live scope. That's why we're going to talk about a bunch of different topics. But I'm going to make plenty of videos about it because it's really, really cool stuff. And, um, you know, I'm definitely a believer in it for sure. What are your thoughts, Randy? I'm like, I'm yeah, like, right. I am preaching tonight. I apologize, guys. I, I told Randy, I'm like, I'm probably just going to be talking the whole stream because I'm just pumped up about this. 
This is hard for me because, man, I'm old. I, I, I consider myself old school, yet I still, uh, you know, accept and I keep up with the trends and everything. And I like to, I like to be as up to date as I can on certain things. But I have fought this thing for so long. I have been against electronic technology. This is really difficult for me to be in this particular podcast because it's like I'm, I'm just fighting it so much internally. But at the same time, it's like, you all can't believe, I mean, I, I do a lot of instructional jerkbait trips. I bet 95% of the people that I've been taking out, just average weekend anglers have got this live scope. They don't want to talk about anything else. They get in the boat with me and it's like, they don't feel like they can catch a fish without a live scope. And I hear this over and over again. I see Johnny, you know, kicking my butt every challenge with the live scope. So I'm like, and, you know, I see these tournaments getting won, you know, by these record weights with live scope. And I'm just like, okay, I give up, you know, it's, it's time. I'm going to, I'm going to have to just, you know, suck it up and get one. So, uh, you know, this, this isn't a, a commercial for live scope. We're talking more about technology than like trying to endorse Garmin, but, uh, it's man, it's something that is just changing everything so quick right now. Yeah. And it just happens that Garmin's the only one that has the live scope. So it's like, I mean, at some point, I guarantee you, Humminbird, Lawrence, they're going to have their own. Yeah. I mean, Lawrence already has their own version, but it's like very antiquated. Um, so just, um, I don't know, we're not, again, we're not trying to push one brand. Like I have, all, I have both Humminbird and Garmin on my boat. So it's not like a, a sponsored deal. It's just the technology. And, um, yeah. you know, in, in general, what I find is that with the live scope, I think that like it is very situational to an extent because you're not always going to need to use it. I'm going to put myself in a situation where I can catch fish with the live scope because that's what I want to do. But like for the first eight of our 12 challenges, no, nine of our 12 challenges, I didn't have the live scope on my boat. So I was catching them with my old eight to 10 year old fish finders and I was still catching fish and I was still able to, to take the W in the summer because the fish were set up in their normal summertime ways. As we get so into the fall, I think that's why we're seeing the live scope be so dominant, is the fall time of the year, these fish suspend so much more. One thing I am interested to see is as we swing back into a regular tournament season schedule, where we have a lot more just like spring tournaments, I don't think that live scope is going to be as dominant. Maybe if we have some early February and March tournaments, but as you get into you know, the spawn, post-spawn, into the summer, a lot of those fish, you don't necessarily need to go catch those suspended fish. There's plenty of fish that are low, they're positioned on the bottom, actively feeding, or they're up in shallow cover. Will there be fish caught on live scope? Yes, but I don't think it's going to be as big of a player with the regular tournament schedule, that springtime schedule. Now, if we start seeing a lot of tournaments in the fall, maybe some winter tournaments, yeah, live scope's going to dominate. But for your average tournament trails and stuff they're happening in march april may june maybe into july i don't i don't think live scope is necessarily going to be a must-have for everyone there's going to be ways you can win the tournament without it put it that way yeah that's that's the thing about it it's like i think we're just seeing we're be, we're beginning to see the you know just the start of this you know how, how it winds up nobody really knows it, it's just you know, like I said, the technology is going to advance with it. Eventually, the live scope is going to be antiquated itself. Something else can, is going to take its place. Yep. But it it, it makes for an interesting uh, topic. I mean, it really does because I think the biggest thing to come out of live scope is the fact that there is a population of bass uh, in every lake across the country that simply do things that we didn't. We had no idea. We had no way to track these fish. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had no type of radio tracking to find out where these fish went and we're finding out that the myths are being broken all the time about bass movement bass behavior um just the personalities of the fish in general it's 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 if nothing else it's been an educational tool for just the biology of, of large mouth small mouth and spotted bass oh and that's the most fascinating thing for me honestly is just finding new ways to catch fish and you know, it gets boring after a while if you just go fish the exact same way every single time. I love experimenting with new baits, new technology. That's what's exciting for me in fishing because it's always, there's so much to always learn. 
And if you don't want to go fish tournaments and you just want to go fishing, there's so many techniques you can still go learn and still go catch a bunch of fish on. You don't need to go live scope fish out in the middle of the lake. And you can go throw a frog down the bank. You can learn to throw a big swim bait. You can learn to fish a deep diving crankbait. There's a million techniques to learn. For me, I've learned pretty much all of the offshore and most of the shallow techniques already. So it's cool for me because I'm getting to learn something new. And I think it's the same way for you, Randy. Like you pretty much know most of everything that had been done. So this is very new cutting edge. And it's something that both of us are like, we don't know what's going to happen with it. And that's for me, very exciting. Yeah. Do you think we're going to see a live scope on John Cox's boat at any time? So think this is crazy. Let me leave you with this. Cause people are asking, what is the effective range or depth range for live scope? There is a tournament that John, John Sukup, who owns the Bass Tank, the guys have talked about the Bass Tank who set up the live scope, and he runs the Bass Tank, he owns it. He won a BFL or finished second or something in a BFL tournament on the Arkansas River in Oklahoma. And this is a shallow, muddy, dirty water fishery. And he was catching fish by putting his live scope in like the five or 10 foot range, like very shallow. He was going into backwaters and he was flipping laydowns watching his jig or his plastic fall over the laydown and watching two and three pounders eat the bait on the live scope as he's flipping. And it's, he's like literally saying, I was, I saw every fish I was flipping before I even caught them. That is crazy. And he's like, I could just go through, scan a log, flip my jig in there and I could make four or five flips. And if I saw a fish kind of flare up around, and it's not like you can see it like you can in deep water, what he's doing, like you need to be very dialed i've done it once or twice now and it's not easy you have to know literally exactly what you're looking for and i'll make videos about it so you got don't worry i'm making videos on all this stuff like detailed instructions so don't worry about that but like the ability to do that people just don't know that's a thing and there's little tricks of the trade. There's all these little things about it. Like the fish, if they're on the bottom, they're hard to see versus if they're suspended up. And how do you tell if there's a fish versus a rock and when it moves? There's all these little details. And I'll, again, I'll get into all of it because there's a lot of little nuances I'm still trying to get my head around. But once all of that's discovered and understood and people make videos on it in a year, next six months, whatever, especially myself... It's going to get stupid what people are doing with live scope. And I I have a feeling if it's not this version, like this live scope, this might still be allowed. The next technology, if there's anything that gets above live scope, I feel like that has to get limited. Because at that point, it's just going to be an underwater camera that points out straight ahead of the boat. Because yeah. at this point, it's that that's the only next step I can see, honestly. That, that's what I've always said. I've, I've always said at the point it's going to be basically just an underwater camera. And then then what do you have? I mean, what what does the sport of fishing become at that point? And I think at that point it takes away from everything that we all love about fishing. I mean, fishing is like it's supposed to be therapeutic. It's supposed to be healing on a lot of different levels. And you just take away so much of that with that. But you know, just as we thought, just as you thought that bass fishing couldn't get more complicated, here we are, you know, it's like it's more yep. complicated all the time. So any of you all out there that just want the more simple approach, you can, you know, just, you know, we'll, we'll give you a little bit of both on there. We'll give you the high tech in from Johnny and I'll, we'll give you the, the low tech in from me because both of them are effective at times and you can still compete doing both of them. Oh, for sure. And uh, one last question here is, you know, um, apparently Jacob Wheeler, I was going to watch that video. I should have watched it before this. I got caught up doing other stuff. He made a video about comparing live scope versus 360 imaging. And he said that basically live scope is good for offshore fishing and 360 is good for shallow water fishing. Honestly, I find that live scope is really great for shallow water fishing too. I I literally have, I have a story, Randy, where I was live scoping 50 feet in front of me, 30, or it was like 35, 40 feet in front of me on a flat. There was a stump in three foot of water. I was scanning with my live scope, watched a fish swirl on a stump under the water I couldn't see. This is with regular live scope, not with perspective mode, just regular live scope. Fired a crankbait over there, hung a, uh, like a four and a half to five pounder. He ended up jumping and breaking me off, got hung around the stump. But I saw a fish in two and a half to three foot of water on a flat on live scope and hooked a four and a half to five pounder on a square bill. Now, that's very hard to do because I knew exactly what I was dialed in looking for, but I just don't think people realize what live scope is capable of, and that's what I've been showing some of the stuff by guys from um, the Bass Tank, and I've just been 
spend a lot of time looking at it. And so I know it's, there's a lot more than what people know you can do with it. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, so, um, got a bunch of other questions rolling in here, but before we do that, one thing I want to do is just kind of remind you guys about some of the stuff on fishmoment.com. Um, definitely check out the bass tank, by the way, if you want to get a live scope installed in your boat. And then uh, just a reminder that we have the Fish Moment Lake breakdowns that we just put out. I spent like the last two and a half weeks every day, all my waking hours, redoing these maps so we could do 40 GPS waypoints that you can download on your fish finder, giving you more precise recommendations. We give area descriptions. We have them for lakes all across the country based on the season of the year. We have a bunch of fall maps out right now, and we're going to be doing all of the winter maps here. Randy's working on those right now. So definitely check those out. They're awesome. You can read through all the stuff. I don't want to waste too much time here. And also for the virtual seminars, um, we just posted a new offshore winter seminar focused on offshore bass fishing in the winter. And then Randy and I are also going to be doing an advanced winter crankbait fishing seminar dealing with cold water crankbait fishing whenever the water temperatures are below 60 degrees, but especially when that water temperature is between 40 and 50 degrees. Great way for tournament anglers to catch big bags of fish. And if you're fishing any winter series tournaments, I highly recommend signing up for this seminar if you can, because it will help you catch more fish and win more money in winter tournaments. I can guarantee you that. And I do have two more spots available in my advanced electronic seminar. And definitely sign up for that if you want to really get dialed in on the stuff we talked about in this webinar. It's not focused on live scope. It's focused on 2D sonar, side imaging, down imaging. But it will really help you with all electronics in general. So, um, yeah, that is that, Randy. So, any more remarks on live scope and all this? I mean, obviously, we're going to be making more content about it, more specific videos. But I just kind of wanted to address it while it's like a kind of a hot topic to mm-hmm. give our opinion on it. And then we're going to give detailed, detailed instruction on the, on the capabilities and all that stuff here in the near future. Yeah, the, the thing that I'm really interested in is like, you know, everybody knows that I'm a big jerkbait fisherman and we're getting ready to get into that prime time over the next couple months. And the way that I fish jerkbaits on Clearwater Lakes, I can see right now that a lot of the bass that I've been catching ha- has, have just been random. You know, I've just been getting out there and random casting over areas I know they live and I'm catching them. But I can't even imagine getting out there with a live scope and being able to get in these areas I know the bass live and and utilize this technology because I tell all the guys that I take out all the time I said you'd probably be amazed about how many people that are how many bass are within an inch of your jerk bait looking at it and don't bite it and so that's what I'm really looking to forward to going out with you Johnny with your live scope is to is to really understand how jerk bait fishing and live scope work together because to me, I can see that's going to be the most incredible application ever for it. For sure. I'm, I'm super excited. There's so much content we're going to create with the live scope. It's going to be cool. Uh, again, we're not going to be doing all live scope content. I promise you that because it's not accessible to everyone. We want to make sure that we're not just on the cutting edge. We're also talking about all the techniques. So don't worry. We're not going all in live scope on this <laughs> channel. Um, but uh, what's up? Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> We're not going to be going all live scope on there. And I'll say one more thing about like jerkbait fish in, in the winter time of the year. You've got two populations of jerkbait fish. We talked about this in the seminar. Did you got those bass that you that you pull off the bottom, and you got those bass that are suspended. So you can still catch that population of bass that you're pulling up off the bottom that you simply do not need live scope for. So it's a uh, there's always more than one way to catch them out there for sure. Yeah, and there's going to be days where I'm probably just going to take the live scope off the boat and just say no live scope today just because I I like going old school because that's how I fished for 15 years without live scope. And I I still like fishing that way too. So um, that's something we're going to do. But one question we have from Billy uh, asking what uh, live scope unit I use. I use the 1022 XSV GPS maps mainly just because it's the only one that allows me to record the screen it has like the active captain recording function. Otherwise I would have gone with like the 93 SV or the seven inch. I would just go with like the, the maybe a nine inch screen. I don't know. Nine inch screen with, you know, the, whatever you need, 
based on your budget. The reason I got mine, I got the le the least expensive one that I could get that allowed me to record the screen. That's the whole deal. Not super complicated, um, but I don't think it really matters that much. I think it's more an interpretation. And I'm going to be doing a full rundown of my new electronic setup too because I got brand new graphs. And you guys are probably going to be surprised with what I have on my boat. I actually just got a couple Helix 9s. I didn't even, like, I had the ability to get whatever graphs I wanted. And I got Helix 9s. Just regular Gen 3 Helix 9s, nothing crazy. Um, I could have got Solux 15s or, you know, two HDS 12s, but I decided don't need all that. I kind of did like a budget um, Jacob Wheeler rig, so I'll talk about that, and I've been catching a bunch of fish with that rig, and I like it a lot. So anyways, um, yeah, we're going to be um, posting this live stream, guys, to the Fish the Moment podcast. And one thing that's going to be really cool that we're doing Fish the Moment podcast, I've just posted like... 40 podcasts on there so there's a ton of old live streams as well as old videos that we put up there that you can listen to as you're driving to the lake and all you need to do let me pull this up here um is you can go on to apple the podcast app as well as the um you know, like itunes podcast app and you can also go to spotify and let me share my screen here and basically what you can do is go to the fish the moment podcast and you can see we have a ton of episodes from all the videos there with Rick Clun to all of like this live stream will be there. And we're also going to be pushing or putting some of our shallow versus offshore discussions on here. So basically, if you don't have time to watch all the YouTube videos during the week, you can download them and listen to them in podcast form and listen to like a 20, 30 minute episode on the way to the lake or on your way to work. So definitely check out the Fish Moment podcast. And if you leave a review, one thing that we're going to be doing is once we get to a thousand reviews, if we get a thousand reviews on the Fish Moment podcast, we have 115 right now. I'm going to be giving away my Hummingbird Onyx unit that I had on my boat with all my waypoints in it. There's like 3,000 waypoints in there. I'm not deleting any because I don't really care. You guys can come fish my spots. I give away all of my good spots in my videos anyways. But I have a lot of old spots that I also have that I haven't shown in videos. I don't, also don't care if you guys go fish. And I'm giving away that unit once we hit 1,000 reviews to one of the people that review this podcast. So if you guys want to have a chance to win a free Hummingbird 10-inch Onyx unit with all my waypoints on it, go to the Fishmoan Podcast app leave a rating and you'll be entered in to win that. So that's what we're going to be doing. And other than that, Randy, we are going to sign off for the night, but thanks for joining me on my, uh, my lecture slash, uh, stump preaching on the live scope. Uh, it was very fun for me. I don't know if it was as fun for you. I was just talking a lot, but hopefully, uh, you guys on the stream learned something and, uh, I wasn't too, uh, too all about it. No, I, I'm a student of the sport too, man. I, I'll take information wherever I can get it. I don't care if it's a five-year-old kid or whatever. I mean, I, I just it was extremely educational to me and I just to, to listen to you explain it. I'm, I'm not proud about that. For sure. Awesome. Well, guys, really appreciate uh, everyone joining in. We have 281 people still on. So again, appreciate everyone always tuning in the live streams. We're going to be doing these very regularly. I'm also going to be getting out a lot more videos. Um we have Randy's upcoming, or all of Randy's practice and tournament videos from Bassmaster Opens coming up, several shallow versus offshore challenges. I have a bunch of videos I've stockpiled from the past that I just hadn't gotten out. So there's a bunch of content coming, and I'm going to be trying to put out like four to six videos a week with the live stream. So a lot of content. Um, finally got everything organized with everything else on the website, so we should be rocking it out and hopefully you guys are going to be enjoying the content so other than that thanks for checking out the live stream and we'll see you guys next time hmm.